here at Coron we do a lot of 3D animation for our client work. So we're very experienced animators, but, but this, this Megillus Lester project is a much larger scale than anything that we've worked on so far. And in order to achieve that, we actually needed to go beyond anything we've worked with before, and so we got a motion capture studio. Motion capture was done completely independent of the vocal acting. The vocal acting was done, and then different actors would put on the motion capture suits and perform. Three, two, one, start. Motion capture involves our actors dressing up in these suits with 49 different markers strategically placed on their bodies to mark where the different joints and areas of movement would be. Those dots will give, give the computer the information that it needs to know how the joints are bending and how the joints are, are moving. Our room, which, is, which has 16 cameras all around it, can track those markers and, and in doing so track the motion that the actors do within the specified volume. And that way we can then apply that data from those markers to an, a skeleton in our 3D software and then apply that to our animated characters. Some of the internal staff here at Colram, like Tim and Cullen, they would put on those suits and they would do it. After a while it became impossible because I need, needed Tim and Cullen to manage the uh, animation effort since they, that was my art director and, and my uh, animation director. I needed them to be uh, you know, in the developers area working with the other animators. So we brought in Yuri and Noah, um, our primary actors, and they were able to spend all day working in the mocap room uh, doing the capture came in, you know, they'll read the script, go through all the action, you know, act out all these scenes for each individual character. A lot of times Tate doing multiple takes and is up to us to kind of figure out, okay, well, which takes are best. And a lot of times we even end up combining a lot of different takes. So we have actors that are very talented. They have to come in and listen to the recordings that we have, then they have to act it out. Well, we put on these uh, skin tight suits, uh, you know, get, get past the feeling of being like a ninja. And then we would, um, we would get shown like uh, rough cuts of what the scene would look like. You know, you want to move here, you want to move, you want to gesture there. Before every scene, you've got to do the T-pose so that they can start the, the scene like that. And basically, um, just come in and, and they'd have a list of things for us to do. Like, you know, today you're going to be uh, King Akashverosh. Today you're going to be Lester doing a song. Today we need you guys doing a musical number. The suits that we use have markers that reflect light. So the cameras need to be able to pick them up and I have to calibrate everything first. By calibrate, it means to set up the cameras so that they are aware of the space we have our actors in. And to calibrate the space, I have to take a wand, that's what we call it. And it basically has three markers on it. And I have to wave the wand around. and then they go over to the other room and do it again for phase shift. What we used is a technology called phase shift that allowed us to actually perform the roles ourselves in front of a camera that scanned our faces in 3D and allowed us to apply that to the characters. It's almost like lip sync improv, if that makes any sense, because you're, you know what's coming and you're lip syncing while you're reading and you're sort of okay, he's going to elongate the vowel here, uh, and you just sort of go through it like that. And it actually was able to work out a lot, lot easier than, than we were afraid of. There's a camera that sits on um, our monitor, and we have the actors come in, and basically they have to memorize the dialogue, and they have a number of poses they have to follow as a guideline when setting up the software. And then after that, they just have to read the lines and be expressive. And it captures everything. Okay. Oh, I remember you. you used well, now that we had the 
a body half of the motion capture performance and the facial half of the motion capture for performance. We um, are assembling that together into one cohesive performance. And uh, it's, it's far more work than simply taking that those captures and applying them to the characters. There's a lot of manual adjustments that are required. Once the mocap data is in the character, there, there's no guarantee that it's 100% accurate and clean and ready to, you know, ready, ready to go. Uh, one of the things is that the the height differences and size differences between the actor and you know the cartoon characters are going to be different. So you may have uh, hands and limbs kind of just slightly intersecting with each, with each other, so you have to kind of clean that up. So it's really important when doing motion capture for the actors to be able to see themselves as the characters that they're being. If they're gonna be like a child, they need to see what, what size they are and so they can help them with interactions with other characters. If they're gonna be a, a big, massive character who's like tall, like a, like a brute, like, like Big Son or something, you know, he's, you're gonna wanna move differently as an actor, depending on which character you are. So it's important to know who you are, how they move, and, and just what relation you have to the environment around you and to the other characters in the scene. I was always fascinated when I would watch these how-tos and behind the scenes and see them in a room like this doing the, the, the performance. I always wanted to do it. I thought it would be one of the coolest things as an actor to do because, you know, if, if I'm in front of a, a camera as myself and I'm playing, you know, Great King Akashverosh, you sort of have to have a little bit of suspension of disbelief when you're looking at me. But when you're in a room like this and you do the performance and it's translated in post and the king is put on my body, there is no more suspension of disbelief. So it really allows for a lot of, um, a lot of creativity and a lot of exploration of your own body and your own physical awareness. Without any kind of motion capture solution, the alternative would have been just to keyframe everything by hand. You know, like you'd be sitting there at your desk just setting keyframes, moving certain joints here and there, and or, or pulling, you know, inverse kinematic limbs all around. And, and this way, you just you just act out the scene, see how well it played out. You could just do it again on the spot if you decide to. Probably would take double or triple the amount of time without it. <laughs> It's pretty exciting actually wearing these suits. It's a lot of fun. Um, you get to not just play out as this other character, but you get to watch it live in real time, and that's, that's just fun and exciting. Motion capture is used in lots of films, video games. Um, it's like definitely kind of like the future of animation because it's so much faster. Motion capture data is completely 3D, um, so you know, if, if we need to change a camera angle you know, for some, to do something different with the mocap data, uh, we can definitely do that. You get so much more detail in the animation itself. You get all the, this nice secondary movement that otherwise is very difficult to hand animate. Things like, like breathing or weight shifting while, you know, standing in place. Something that, like the animator really has to think about that and go out of their way to apply it when doing hand animation. But it's completely natural when doing motion capture. So some of the characters are a lot more fun to play out as, you know, it's, it's really satisfying to be Big Son and you're, you're this big lumbering guy, but then you know, when you go out and you play as, as uh, you know, someone like, like Akshverosh or, or, or Zeresh, you're like this, this really wide character with just like so much mass and it's really difficult. You, you have to pay attention to like this, this huge girth that you don't have in real life. But you can see the way you interact with it on, on the screen. And so, so you just have to keep that in mind as you're, as you're moving and, and try to pay attention to the way like, the body displaces as you, as you move around. At one point I had to put on the suit myself just to act out a scene that I was working on. So that was a lot of fun. The motion capture suit is as tight as it looks. So, you know, some of us really enjoy wearing them because it, you know, got the physique. But, uh, yeah. It's, uh, it's not the most uncomfortable thing in the world, but after, you know, five or six hours, 12 hours or more <laughs> in a row in Velcro, it, uh, it, it can be kind of hot and uncomfortable. We have to remember to wash them between uses. That's the, the problem, yes. But, uh, but it, it's fun though, it's definitely fun. <laughs>